Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. My name is Anya and today I'm going to be sharing with you my 38 week pregnancy update. So before we get started, I wanted to let you know that I think I got bitten by a mosquito right here above my eyebrow, which is why it's so red right now, but don't mind it, let's move on. So this week was quite the exciting week. Um, exciting because my doctor did tell me that after I completed my 37th week, I could go into labor at any time and everything would be fine. I would be considered full term. So when I saw her this week, she told me that everything was perfect, everything was fine, and that at this point, 37 weeks plus, I would be absolutely perfect if in, in the event I would go into labor. Now, I do thank God that I am all the way through 37 weeks and now into my 38th week and I haven't gone into labor and I am praying that it doesn't happen until the very end, which is a 40 week mark. On Monday, I had another ultrasound appointment and I know in my last update, I mentioned that it might be a possibility that I would have more ultrasound appointments. I wasn't really sure at the time, but she did confirm this week that because I am considered high risk, again, because of my age, uh, this is going to be a reoccurrence every single week now until I deliver. So every single week I will go in, get an ultrasound, and then I will go in for a follow-up with her every single week until I deliver. This week's ultrasound went perfectly fine. I actually went in, she measured everything, fluid is good, the baby is moving great, she's breathing great, um, everything is going along very nicely. So I was really happy to hear that. And then the next day after that, I went in for my follow-up with my OBGYN and she confirmed again everything that the tech had already told me. Um, I also was supposed to get an NST, non-stress test, and I know about this because when I was actually checking out, um, I heard the doctor tell one of the nurses, hey, every single time Anya comes in, you know, until she delivers, every single time she is going to need an NST because of the high risk pregnancy status situation. So. Um, I didn't get it this time around. I don't think it was planned that way. I think it was an error, but everything has been going nicely and the doctor didn't seem concerned, so it wasn't an issue to not have it done this week. Now, um, my blood pressure has remained the same, so I am at no risk for uh, preeclampsia. It's actually at, uh, well, the day that I went into the doctor was at 100 over 60, which is normal for me my weight <laughs> i am now at 156.8 i have officially passed the um the amount that i weighed when i was pregnant with sebastian and again with sebastian i actually delivered at 138 138 <laughs> uh with sebastian i delivered at 38 weeks and three days that's where the 138 came from but um, yeah, I, I was I, within the 155 range when I delivered him. Definitely this baby girl is coming, I feel like, a little bit bigger for sure. Another exciting thing that happened this week is that we got our pregnancy pictures taken. And it was kind of like my pregnancy shoot slash a family picture day type of thing. Uh, I really, really liked it, especially because we used the same person that we got when uh, we originally got the first pictures when I was pregnant with Sebastian. And so I told him that I wanted to recreate a bunch of the pictures that we had taken with him. When I say a bunch, I mean, we got a total of 20 pictures the first time around. So uh, out of those, maybe five or six were repeat pictures that we took, kind of imitating what we had done the first time with, which I haven't gotten the pictures yet. I'm dying to get those pictures back, but I think it's going to be a really cool thing to like compare side by side, you know, both pregnancies, which is gonna be, I don't know, I think it's gonna be cool. So definitely my energy has been dwindling throughout the week, but I have not had the opportunity to let that get in the way of me getting things done because there is so much to do. Work has been super busy, so I've been pouring everything I've got into that as well. And then also getting my 
stuff ready here for the baby let me tell you last night which of course was before i turned 38 weeks <laughs> um because today i turned 38 weeks last night i thought that was it i started feeling really deep pain in my lower back which is exactly what i started to feel the last time around when i started to go into um, delivery mode with sebastian and i told my husband oh my goodness like you know her clothes were in the washer at that moment like they weren't even dry um i was trying to get things done but i wasn't anywhere near where i felt i needed to be to actually be able to just jump in the car and go to the hospital so i was a little bit freaking out and i thought well maybe i should just go to sleep try to rest and see if that will help and then kick it off full force tomorrow morning I do think that was the case because I woke up this morning feeling a lot better. I don't feel and have not felt the lower back pain all day today. So I think that's a really, really good sign. I don't think, I really don't think that she's going to come any earlier than 39 weeks. I would be very surprised if this was my last pregnancy update, honestly. Um, so this morning I woke up, I was able to do all of the things that I couldn't get to last night because I just called it a night after I started feeling those pains. And I feel like we're in pretty good shape now. So all of her clothes are washed and dried, folded, put away. Uh, I washed everything to do with the bedding. Santiago has to put that together because we have a little bassinet that's going to go into our room. So I'm going to dress that all up tonight. I need to actually get my hospital bag ready, but that will actually happen at the end at the end of today for sure and all of sebastian's laundry is done all of our laundry is done everything you know in terms of the upkeep right now is done the other thing that we got to do this morning is go and do a big food haul so i do feel like we're well stocked for a few weeks now and i'm not gonna feel like oh my goodness i don't have anything here to feed sebastian while i'm you know so tied up with breastfeeding and doing all of the things for the new baby because as you know those first few weeks are so hectic um, there's barely any sleep there's just watching the baby feeding changing making sure that everything's okay the doctor's appointments um you know all of that those two first weeks maybe even into the first month is kind of like marathon style so i'm definitely happy to know that at least all of these things are now done and out of the way so i'm in a different setup today because i usually film these updates in our bedroom which is actually parallel to sebastian's bedroom well, this week we actually did a change in his bedroom. We took away his crib because we're gonna be using that for the new baby. We didn't want him to, of course, feel like this change was happening suddenly because this new baby is here. So we wanted to do it beforehand. And we bought him a new mattress. It's super comfortable. It's very, very good. And we actually put it out for him yesterday. So. He's actually napping in his room right now. The transition is a little bit tricky, definitely a little bit tricky. I would love to actually get some advice from any of you who have had the opportunity to transition your toddler from a crib straight into a big boy bed and not like a um, toddler bed uh, because I, you know, we're, we're a little bit in the in struggle mode. Uh, he's doing great he only cried one time over it and then after that he's kind of been like eh i don't know but he hasn't cried he has stayed he has slept and i think that's definitely a very good sign but actually keeping him on top of his mattress has been a struggle so if you have any advice whatsoever i am definitely very gladly taking it from you so while that has been very exciting for us you know seeing him grow up and and knowing that he's okay um, making that transition it has also been a little bit difficult and a little bit hard um emotionally as well because a lot of times there were you know many many thoughts going through my head thinking maybe i shouldn't have gone this fast you know maybe i should have left him in his crib I, you know who cares if he's 15 years old and sleeping in his crib still like as long as he's happy i don't care 
um, but that's not the reality the reality is that he is ready to move out of his crib um, he has not actually tried to climb out of the crib but he absolutely can if he wanted to so it is a very valid possibility that it could even be harmful for him for us to continue leaving him in the crib but at the same time i thought oh my goodness what have i done <laughs> the minute i heard him crying over not wanting to sleep in his mattress you know he was so used to and so comfortable in his crib that it just felt like maybe we did the wrong thing by transitioning him this early um i don't feel that way as strongly as i did yesterday about it because you know time has gone on and he has really shown that he can handle it so i'm very very happy about that but at the same time i just want the transition to be as smooth as possible for him for me for all of us and just you know and be happy and calm <laughs> so let's talk about the baby's development at this point uh 38 weeks for let's see here baby's hair and eyes both have color although they may not be the same color as they will be when she gets older the biggest symptoms to look for at this point are in pregnancy symptoms they're signs of labor <laughs> if you experience any of these big ones like your water breaking regular and painful contractions or other signs like vaginal bleeding you should notify your healthcare provider so the doctor actually definitely did tell me all of that when i went in to visit her and i thought like no i'm not going to be calling you this week at all i haven't experienced any actual contractions whatsoever and by the way i actually forgot to mention that when i went in this time around they tested me for group b strep so they did have to take a culture um, they haven't done the internal uh, examination yet because i'm trying to hold off on that as much as i possibly can in my experience it is extremely painful probably even more painful than actually pushing the baby out because when you push a baby out, at least you get some relief at the end of the whole thing. You're like, whew, that's done. But oh my goodness, like that internal uh, checkup that they do to measure your centimeters or like see how much dilation, that is so extremely painful for me. I want to like delay it as much as I possibly can. So they did do a culture test and they um, sent that in. I'm waiting to hear the results from it next week. And that will determine whether I actually have to go in right away after I start, after I start exper experiencing my contractions. Because if I do break water, I have to go in immediately if I am group B strep positive. Um, that's that could be really dangerous for the baby and so that's why it's very necessary to be under medication as soon as the water breaks because if you if I deliver if I were to deliver my baby without getting into the antibiotics and I am positive for group B strep it could be potentially um, lethal for her and I definitely don't want to do anything that puts her in danger and so I'm waiting patiently not so patiently uh, to hear back whether i am positive or negative on that so she did say that we would start the internal testing next week so i'm bracing myself for it um you know if she feels it's the right thing to do and it's the best thing for the baby then i'm gonna have to suck it up and go for it but like i said oh my goodness holy pain and honestly i haven't started getting any type of labor um, symptoms uh, other than what I mentioned earlier which was what I started experiencing last night and I am pretty sure it had all to do with me being completely over exhausted however I am very much making sure that I am taking it super easy so that I don't break my water like before it's supposed to break um, the last time around I blew my nose and my water broke so I don't want to like do any straining at all because I don't want it to feel like I felt the last time like oh my goodness I did something that actually caused my water to break the doctor has assured me that that was not the case that it was probably just like about to break and it was just like the next thing that I did no matter what it was my water would have broken but i still couldn't help but feel like oh if i wouldn't have blowed my nose maybe it would have been a couple more days or a few more days luckily everything was fine like we were very blessed to receive sebastian 
100% okay so that was perfect but this time around I just want to make sure I'm like taking extra precaution like no coughing no sneezing no nothing <laughs> baby could now be almost seven pounds by now and over 19 and a half inches tall about the size of a spaghetti squash although genetics the amount of time spent in the womb the health of the pregnancy and the sex make these estimated sizes nothing more than educated guesses boys are generally born larger than girls though girls will catch up in height and weight early in childhood i'm actually surprised by that statement because i do think that this baby which is a girl is actually bigger than sebastian i will be very surprised if she is not bigger than sebastian which totally means that i am like eating it up for no reason <laughs> So in terms of how mom is doing, it says there's nothing left to do but wait. Baby is almost here. In fact, it could be any day now. If you start experiencing nausea again, blurred vision, severe abdominal pain, or a persistent headache, let your healthcare provider know. You will want to get them checked out immediately, as this could be signs of preeclampsia. If you work, you should start thinking about when you're going to return to work and who is going to care for your baby during the day. All that stuff is taken care of, so I'm not even gonna think about it. But thank you for letting me know. <laughs> I definitely think at this point we're both ready, both her and I, but for some reason, I'm still trying to kind of drag my feet a little bit in terms of actually being able to say, okay, now I'm ready. <laughs> because again, there's so many things going on and so many people will ask, are you ready and my my response to that question is always is anybody ever ready is anybody ever like yes definitely come right now i'm 100 percent ready i mean i would love to know if there is somebody out there that does feel like there's absolutely nothing else that they need to do to tweak to finalize to buff out to like get ready uh, before actually having a baby <laughs> like a human being <laughs> I remember starting the pregnancy out thinking how excited I was to give Sebastian a sibling, how amazing it was going to be to have them playing together, um, how great it would feel to have a baby around again. And I am here towards the very end of the pregnancy and I am still very excited about those same things. I can't wait to see his face when he's introduced to his baby sister. Um, every single time I tell him like, where's hermanita um, he hugs and kisses and touches my belly so much so i cannot wait to tell him like here this is your baby sister the one that you couldn't see for all of this time and now she's here to be with us forever i think that's gonna be wonderful i think it's gonna be amazing and i think he's he's and they are gonna have a great time together so that's it for my pregnancy update of 38 weeks. I cannot believe it already here at this point. Um, I will definitely, definitely be looking forward to making my 39 week pregnancy update. And I will catch you up on all of that then. If you are pregnant, uh, I would love to hear about your symptoms and how you are doing and prepping for the new baby. So please leave your comment in the comment section below. I would love to start a conversation with you as well. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not already. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. Bye.